Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the African Aviators webinar series powered by Embraer. Um, my name is John Howell. I am the CEO and founder of Aviadev Africa. We are a platform dedicated to developing Africa's um, aviation community. We have a podcast, we have a YouTube channel, we have a lot of social media, and we work very closely with my partners for today's webinar as well. Um, I want to say a massive thank you straight away from for, to our sponsors, uh, Embraer, for powering these sessions. This is our fifth session that we've done since we started back in uh, August, September time. And um, they're really demonstrating their support and their belief in the African aviation industry. So before I introduce my, my co-hosts, my co-pilots, and they bring onto the stage our speakers for today, um, what I would like to do quickly for all of you joining us online is to run through the housekeeping. So we are live on Facebook, but we are also here on the Zoom platform. If you have joined us as an attendee, you can use the chat functions to say hello, let us know where in the world you are dialing in from. You can use the questions and answers, we'll be monitoring that. So if you've got any burning questions for our panelists or our hosts, then do ask them there. Um, but you will not be able to use your audio or your video. So just write your questions and we'll get to those uh, as, as, the, uh, as the session um, goes on. What we're going to do in terms of format is that uh, my co-pilots co co are going to come on and they're going to ask some questions to our host, uh, to our, our panelists. Um, we'll be keeping an eye on all of your comments. And after about an hour or so, we will then launch the fabled Aviadev um, quiz, the, uh, the actual aviation quiz that Dozy, my wonderful co-pilot, has put the questions together for. So get yourselves ready for that. That will be about an hour away and we'll give you all of the instructions as we get closer to the time. So um, before I introduce my co-host, this is a long-term commitment. As I said, this is episode number five. We have one more episode in the series to go. Uh, once we've done this session, we'll be putting it back into the group to decide what the next session will be, what the topic will be. So uh, without further ado, let me bring my co-pilots onto the screen. If, if um, Derek and um, Chidoze would like to start their cameras, that would be great. Let me start with, uh, with Derek. So Derek is the founder and publisher of Airspace Africa, which is a dedicated online publication for African aviation. Um, Derek, can you start? I'm gonna need you to- There you go. Uh, yeah, okay. me. Yep. Okay, you're coming. Here you are. Here he is. Here he is. Welcome, welcome aboard. Uh, so Derek does a lot of work in media. He's, he works with me at Avia Dev. He also is often seen on CNBC as a commentator as well. He contributes to magazines, uh, articles, very active on social media. Go to his website, Airspace Africa. Um, get on his on his social feeds, and and you'll you'll keep um, keep abreast of everything that's going on. Derek's also a qualified commercial pilot. I think he took a little flight this week as well, which is great. And uh, he's giving back and inspiring the next generation through his iFly Academy down in South Africa, and he's based in Port Elizabeth. So thank you so much for being with us today. As always, Derek, uh, good to see you. As always, uh, it's a pleasure and as always flattered by your introduction. Uh, yeah. I, <laughs> we could go on for longer. We could go on for longer. You know, there's so many things to say. And, and that's we all wear lots of hats nowadays, don't we? I think that's the key. And um, of course, our fearless leader, Chidozi, is here as well. Uh, he's um, obviously the founder of the African Aviation Group, where this uh, webinar is live streaming. Um, he's a really active you know, in terms of getting that message out. And this whole idea was a was an accumulation of all three of us. So the, the African Aviation Group now has 260,000 members, um, which is amazing. We've got some interference. Let me just mute that one second. Um, and the group, obviously, as you all know out there, because you're all avid members, provides insight, education, a window to the world of African aviation, bit of mentorship, bit of advice. Um, and it's a really valuable, valuable resource. Dozy is also an aviation analyst. He's a prolific content creator. He's a newspaper columnist. He uh, contributes to in-flight magazines as well. So again, wears many hats. So Dozy, thank you for being with us today. I'm looking forward to this. You're muted. Come on, after all this time. <laughs> Hi. Hi, John. Thanks for having me on the program today. I'm glad to be here. And thanks for the amazing intro. My head is all swelling up. <laughs> <laughs> good man, good man. Well, it's great to have you here. And what I what I'm gonna do. 
Perfect. Yeah, it's great. Great to have you. So I'm I'm in the UK. Uh, Chidozi's in Lagos and, and Derek's down in Port Elizabeth. So we're, we're sort of spanning the globe. And that's the beauty of this digital digital side of things now. So I'm going to hand over to who wants to go first? Who's going to introduce first? Uh, Derek or Dozy? I will. OK, Derek, over to you, my friend. And uh, yeah, let's enjoy the show, everybody out there. Make sure you're asking lots of questions and getting involved. Yes, uh, at this point, I'll ask uh, Ife to uh, to come on board and yeah, just show us her face. Yeah, I'm very proud to introduce our, our panelists for today and uh, for this topic of flight dispatch. Very, very interesting and an essential part of the aviation industry as well. So our esteemed panel has a lot of experience uh, in this knowledge area and uh, I'm happy to uh, introduce to you the first one, uh, Ithiolua Onifade, uh, who is uh, in Nigeria. She is a flight dispatch instructor at the Universal School of Aviation in Lagos. Ife has a diverse background and uh, a lot of experience. She has spent six years in flight operations. Uh, she's been in air ticketing. Uh, she's been in tour operations and also has some marketing experience. She has a proven ability to handle flight operations, uh, including managing a team of pilots and flight attendants, as we know. Through her experience, she has become an adept at overseeing day-to-day -day operations and has an in-depth knowledge of the aviation and tourism industries. If you're Laura, uh, welcome to the panel. We are happy to have you. Hi, hi, Derek. Thank you very much for that warm introduction. Hi, everyone. Thank now, you for where you, uh, where we, Where we are meeting you from today, where you sit at? I'm from Abuja right now, Abuja, Nigeria. So it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to have you, and we're looking forward to to your insights and uh, and to also he hear about your story getting into the flight dispatch sector. Thank you so much. Thank All you. All right. Uh, and moving on, I'd like to introduce our next panelist, uh, who is Lawrence Charles Kanu. Lawrence Charles Kano is a ground operations officer at the Sierra Leone Civil Aviation Authority. He's a Sierra Leonean by nationality, and I'm sure this is the first that I've used this word. Uh, he is an aviation enthusiast. He's worked for several airlines, including A-Sky, uh, Gambia Bird, Fly Salone, and Air Peace, all as an operations officer. Lawrence later gained admission to study flight dispatch in the United States of America. And because of his background, Lawrence says that he's a living testament to, yes, you can do it. After his dispatch training in the States, he was supported by the Sierra Leone Civil Aviation Authority, who offered him a job as a ground operations officer. Lawrence says that working with the CAA has always been a dream. Welcome, Lawrence. Uh, good to have you. It's a pleasure to have you, Lawrence, and we are looking forward to hearing from you. And uh, you have a very inspirational story and uh, inspiring, and uh, I came to learn more about your, your, your experience in the United States as well. Uh, okay, uh, now that we have uh, the both of you here, I'd like uh, uh, to move the button and hand it over to my uh, my co my co-host and uh, co-pilot uh, for for this event, uh, Chidozi. Over to you. You have control. Yeah. Hello. Good morning, everyone. I have control now for my co-pilot, Derek Nsika from South Africa. Uh, police, actually. Um, good morning, everyone from Lagos, Nigeria, and welcome to the fifth edition of. The African Inverters webinar series we're having today. Today we take a look at flood dispatch profession. It's one of it's not actually one of those most glamorous professions in the whole world, but let's let's extract and take a look at that and see what happens today. And at the end of the day, we'll have come out with the whole fact about the whole profession. Um, today we're taking a look at like I said before. Um, before I proceed with the um, Q and A session, I would love to say a big thank you to our sponsor M Briar for showing commitment and leadership. I want to say welcome to all the panelists in the house. 
um, I don't know if we have uh, Elizabeth Jordan, not Jordan now. Is Elizabeth on board now? She's still struggling, I'm afraid, at the moment. We're trying to fix yeah. it, but not at the yeah. moment. And I have to, I'd love to go to, I would love to go to um, Ife Oluwa in Abuja, Nigeria, for the Q&A questions. Ife Oluwa, are you there? Hello, I'm there. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Welcome back. Uh, thanks for joining us okay. on the program today. Thank you right, so much um, for having me, Daisy. I'm, I'm taking a look at your profile as we speak, and it's actually very impressive, almost intimidating. And it's interesting how you have gone from being, uh, yeah, being um, a, a tour operator to a ticketing agent to a flight operational officer and now to a flood dispatcher and a flood dispatch instructor. I would love to know, um, flood dispatch is not one of those glamorous professions out there. And not many people know how to become a flood dispatcher. We all know what to do when we want to become a pilot, a cabin crew. We all know what to do, what to go to. Please tell us in, in, in class of terms, how, how can one become a flood dispatcher? Okay, thank you very much for that question. First of all, I would like to introduce myself. Okay, my name is Ife Oluwa Unifade. I'm a flight dispatcher, flight instructor. Okay, flight dispatch instructor, ground instructor, travel consultant, trainer, and aviation mentor. So I've been in the aviation industry for 13 years where I kicked off my aviation career a year after I rounded up with secondary school at the age of 15. So I got certified in air ticketing and reservation. This was before my first degree in um, Lagos State University where I acquired the BSc in mass communication. So I got exposed to tourism during this program. I went on a couple of excursions and tours to West African countries. I developed so much interest in traveling and tourism. So I began work with um, Africa Travels and Tours as a tour operator. I organized excursions and tours within Nigeria and Ghana for primary and secondary schools. When I rounded up my BSc in mass communication in 2014, I continued with my aviation career. I worked with Tosa Travels and Tours as a ticketing officer, did a couple of trainings with Amadios and Seba, after which I became an independent travel consultant with Universal Travels and Tours. So in 2017, I began my journey into flight operations proper. I became a licensed flight dispatcher, worked as a flight operations officer with Aero Contractors of Nigeria. After which I proceeded into flight dispatch instructing. I got certifications and licenses from the United States to further push my flight dispatch instructing career forward. So I've worked I've undergone <clears throat> more than 20 certified trainings, both physically and virtually from Nigeria, Kenya, India, United Kingdom, and the United States, all relevant, okay, all relevant to the aviation industry. I've also trained over 200 students, ranging from pilots, flight dispatchers, aviation managers, ground staffs, down to customer service personnel for airlines, helicopter companies, and approved training organizations in Nigeria. So I'm currently running a master's program in airlines and travel management. Okay, I'm an FAA licensed and NTA authorized flight dispatch instructor from the Universal School of Aviation. I'm married to the most supportive husband and with four beautiful kids. So back to your question, sorry about that. I just always like to do, you know, a brief introduction about myself. So what does it, you know, take to become a flight dispatcher. How can one become a flight dispatcher? You know, there are different processes. There are different processes and certifications for different countries. So in Nigeria, before you can become a flight dispatcher, you need to be 21 years old and above. The license um, is usually awarded by the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority. Okay, so there are certifications as a basic flight dispatcher and an advanced flight dispatcher. So you will pass the NCA examination with a score 75% and above, okay? Then the examinations are usually divided into two papers. You have the paper one, the paper two. So your performance in the paper one will determine if you're going to you know, take the second one. So aside that, the ability to read, the ability to write and communicate in English language goes a long way then you need like um, five credits in WIAC, including English and mathematics. Okay, so a first degree could also be of a great advantage. You do not need prior knowledge 
or flight operations or aviation before you can enroll. Okay, you'll be taught everything you need to know in an approved training organization. Thank you. All right, I understand. Thank you for the, for the, for the insightful um, answer to the question. I understand there are basic and advanced flight dispatch courses. Please, can you tell us about them? Okay, so um, basic, the basic flight dispatch course is the first course you have to go through. It runs for approximately three months, after which you proceed, okay, to become, um, to be enrolled um, as an advanced flight dispatch dispatcher. So it's um, around um, three months basic and three months advanced, altogether about six months. Then after which you go to an airline, you get fixed with an airline to do the on-the-job training, okay, which is usually about 90 days, about 90 days, approximately three months. So altogether, it's around nine months to one year, depending on the approved training organization. All right, thank you, Ife, for the generous answer to the question. I have a few more questions for you, but let me go to, I'll come back for you in a GFI, but let me go to Lawrence Kelly in Sierra Leone and pick his brain on one of these, one or two things. I'll come back to you. Hello, Lawrence, are you there for me? Yes, sir, I'm here. All right, welcome to the program. Um, you had uh, if you tell us how to become a flood dispatcher. Now tell us, who is a flood dispatcher? What exactly do flood dispatchers do? Um, basically, a flight dispatcher is someone who assists in planning the safety of the flight. Like most people, when they plan their traveling, they think that the safety of the flight is in the hands of the pilot. Yes, sometimes it's true. But mm -hmm. our primary responsibility is to make sure that the, the crew and the passengers arrive safely to their destination. To ensure that, what we do as dispatcher is, we plan the flight path. We take into consideration aircraft's performance. We check weight and balance and loading. We monitor the entire journey of the flight. We check airport restrictions, like including the runway. If there is a no time in the runway, we have to check that and advise also the pilots. In case of bad weather, we advise pilots in en route or we en route if necessary. We determine the best course of action during an emergency. So these are some of the jobs that we do as a flight dispatcher. Right. Um, is that why you're called um, grand pilot sometimes? Yes, exactly. Because we share the same responsibility with the pilot, but we are only pilots on ground. All right. Well, um, um, Lawrence, you have a very interesting story. A few years ago, I went to the US to, to do a flood dispatch program. Uh, I want you to tell us about it, including your, uh, your, your, your experience. You know, where you come from, Sierra Leone, as, in, as actually most part of Africa, if you go to the US, they think you have come from a rich, rich family or you belong to a political side, but none of those applies to you. Tell us your experience in the US. How did you find your train in the US and what has that have, um, how, has, how, how has that helped you to find your feet as a flood dispatcher in, the, in, in Africa? Um. First of all, let me start with thanking God for the opportunities because it has been God all along. Going to the US was not an easy task, actually, because the mentality of many Africans is for you to get a visa. They ah, you will not get a visa, but of all, I had a lot of discouraging words from my friends, from people around me, but I never give up, at least. And my experience in the US was also, it built my confidence first of all, and actually it gave me an international platform, you know. I had a lot of colleagues in class, like most of them are from Germany, Sudan, and US, so I learned a lot of culture from them. Also, I have to save for my training, you know. I have to ask some people to help me. Some people said, ah, no, it's not possible. We are not going to help you. Some people said, ah, if you go to the US for this training, maybe you will not come back and this and that, you know? But I thank God for everything. When I completed my, my training in the US, I was supported by many African airlines, including Air Senegal. Of recent, they offered me a job, but by then I've already got the job with the CA. So I want to give it to the guy to help the CA and also to build my career as 
and spectral. Right, um, Lawrence, how has, how has the American um, a, um, experience helped you in the uh, advertising job market in Africa? Uh, actually, um, when you get an FAA from the US, I believe there are a lot of opportunities from the African market. And also, um, the FAA will build the confidence for any job related to aviation. Like if you want to do a pilot now, you got an FAA by this package because it's just like a one step for you to go through to the pilot training. It, it also helped me to, uh, it helped me a lot. Like there are a lot of things I learned in the US, I interact with a lot of people. And it, it was a great experience for me anyway. <laughs> it right. was great. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. Do you sometimes <laughs> do you sometimes do you sometimes flout this experience of sometimes can sometimes can be it can be it, it can be irresistible at like, I, I went to America, sitting in America. Do you sometimes flout that experience? Say, I school in America, so I can have a job. <laughs> can, actually, can never <laughs> well, actually, my main aim was I want to go and come back and help and help my countries and also help a lot of aspiring in this part of that. You see, it's not about you going to the US and get a job there. You have to come on and help. Like for now, um, those with FAA license in Sierra Leone, we are not more than four or five. So I have oh. to come back and help the colleagues so that we have to teach the others. Something like that was why I actually came back home. You know? OK. Thanks yeah. Thanks a lot for the for generous answer. I have a few more questions for me. Let me go back to Ife in Abuja. Hello, Ife, can you hear me? OK. Yes, can you hear me? Right, I can hear you. Ife, there is something that bothers me about being a flood dispatcher. You know, many flood dispatchers I know tend to always want to become pilots eventually. Um, they don't seem to be satisfied being flood dispatchers, including our um, our aspirant dispatcher on the on the hot seat today, which is Elizabeth Jared from from um, from Uganda. She says she wants to become a pilot. Let me ask this question: Is is flood dispatching profession? Is it a stopgap profession? Is this something that is actually rewarded both financially and professionally? Is it a stopgap profession? Is this a is it a low hanging fruit or something? Something somebody can become and if you um, reward um, uh, satisfied and um, something that's um, rewarding actually. Let me let me pick up on this. What have you say about that? Okay, thank you very much for that question. Um, it's really about what you want, like what's your goal? Okay, that's what you still start with. Then a lot of people go into flight dispatching with uh, the intention to become pilots. I've met with a lot of flight dispatch students, okay, that when you ask them questions, why fly dispatch? They say, oh, it's more like me kickstarting my career into becoming a pilot, which is okay. So fly dispatch is more like a stepping stone to realizing dreams of becoming pilots, okay? But most of the courses in ground school, okay, as um, a fly dispatcher tend to do with um, operations, regulations, radio telephony, okay, radio communication, human performance and limitations weight and balance or your mass and balance, you have your radio navigation, your navigation general, flight planning, air law, air security, and it all goes on and on. All these things are similar to that of what the pilot is gonna do in um, ground school before flying. So, but we also still have people that choose flight dispatching as a career and stick to it till the end, okay? They rise to manager, managerial levels. So it all boils back to your aspirations in life. Okay, flight dispatching is a rewarding profession on its own. So just like every other profession in the aviation industry. All right, thank you. For the interest of those who may want to consider being flight dispatchers, tell us in absolute terms, is it financially rewarding? Yes, it is. <laughs> it is financially <laughs> rewarding. Okay, um, the employment field is good. And um, the good thing is new airlines are springing up day by day. Okay, so the more airlines, the more demand for manpower. The aviation industry itself is promising. As far as people tend to fly from one place to another, the aviation market will always thrive. 
Yes. All right. Thank you, Ife Olua, for those generous answers to the questions. Um, it, for those who are listening, may have to consider becoming flat professor because you fight for the for the, for the, for the house, even though she's not in the house. Um, she said it's rewarding financially. So, and there are many elements picking up. So, if you may, if you want to consider being a flat professor, too, go ahead and buy your forms and become a flat disputer. And on that note, I would give uh, control over to my co-pilot in South Africa. Then I can say I have controls now. Hello, Derek, yeah. you have controls now? Apologies, uh, the mute button. Right. Yeah, I, I thought that was a very interesting uh, discussion and insights from, uh, uh, from the both of the panelists. And if I'm actually very impressed by your, your credentials and your journey, you've actually been, you've been around yeah, in the aviation space. Yeah, congratulations yeah. on that. Thank you very much, Derek. Yeah. And, uh, just yeah, so I don't to what you're saying. Yeah, I, I really do not feel that uh, it takes away from, from flight dispatch that anyone would like to use it as a stepping stone to become a pilot. Uh, I don't think uh, it, it, uh, it negates the profession in any way. I believe flight dispatch is important. It's an essential part of airline operations and safety anyways. So as a flight dispatcher, you are definitely an important person, but as you said, it comes down to your dreams and aspirations as, as a person. Yeah, but just to, uh, to, to, to rebound that back on you uh, uh, and take that discussion forward, what do you feel, and especially as an instructor, what are your, yes, you did mention the intricacies of the course and what you have to study and what it takes, but what, what makes uh, someone uh, successful as, 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 as a flight dispatcher? What qualities do you look out for? For example, you are an instructor. Who, who are the people that, that stand out as, as flight dispatchers and what does the airline consider? Is it just your max in school and, and that is it? Are there any special qualities uh, that, uh, that a person must have in order to be a good uh, dispatcher or to be successful in this profession? Okay, thank you very much, Derek, for that question. Yes, to become a flight dispatcher, you need a whole lot of things, okay? Aside being hardworking, aside being diligent, aside being dedicated to your craft, you also need to have um, great listening skills. Great listening skills is very important, very paramount. Great listening skills. You need to have excellent communication, excellent communication and people skills, okay? When I mean um, yeah. people skills, how do you tend to manage people? Okay, then the ability to stay calm under pressure at any point in time, because sometimes you get frustrated on the job. You need to stay calm under pressure. You need to have good planning skills. You need to have good planning skills. You should be someone that can multitask. Okay, you should be able to multitask, have a good level of health and safety. You need to be fit. You need to be aware of safety, okay, precautionary measures to take. Then decisiveness, you should be good at taking good decisions. Then uh, you should be thoughtful, okay? Have some kind of empathy. Uh, I would also like to add um, IT skills, great IT skills, okay? Goes a long way. Um, a little knowledge of the aviation industry, though you don't really necessarily have, need to have um, knowledge from the onset. Then teamwork, teamwork too. You tend to be working hand in hand with a whole lot of people from the director of flight operations, the OCC manager, your radio operators, your crew members, pilots, a whole lot of people. Okay, then adaptability. A dispatcher's daily duties are always changing. Okay, they should be flexible and able to adapt to any situation, any situation at all. Dispatchers might experience periods of, you know, maybe little call activity followed by high call levels and need to adjust quickly. So they also need to be willing to learn. They should be willing to learn and be comfortable adapting to technical changes. All right, so I think um, that's all you need to have to be a great flight dispatcher. Thank you. Yeah, very dynamic profession. I hope people who are watching are taking the boxes because you've, you've, you've actually listed a, a whole lot of essential qualities. Yeah, uh, very interesting, but uh, I think 
at the root of it all, you definitely have to have uh, uh, the passion as, as well as the ability. Uh, so Lawrence, tell me, what, 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 is, uh, what is a typical day like for you uh, in this profession? Tell me, I, I'd like to get an insight into what the joys are and you know what the perks are. She did mention that sometimes you do have uh, high volume hours, you do have some hours where you know, uh, things are very relaxed, you know, what are the joys and what, what are the, the demerits? You can sell and uh, you can also do the opposite. Yeah, um, thank you so much for that. So then, first of all, let me start with the topical day. The topical day for me as present is when I have to work and help others like um, nine to 10 hours, you know, and also a challenging, a challenging day for me normally is when I have to lose my voice because being a flight dispatcher now, you have to enjoy a lot of things on ground. So if you lose your voice, that one is very, very challenging for me. And also, my profession is that one that is the safety of the crew and the passengers. And uh, I get joy when my team certainly has to finish a tax before deadline. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, very, yeah, very, very interesting. Yeah, that's just uh, the typical, uh, yeah, work work environment. Yeah, I'm sure uh, many of our listeners are, are encouraged. Anyways, yeah. Tell me what what are your ambitions though? As uh, I've I've, I've uh, just got the brief as well of your of your bio, and you know you've been uh, you have an inspirational journey. Obviously, it's not been easy. You've struggled, uh, but you've also been lucky, especially with, with the United States. What, what, what's the next step for you? Uh, uh, because I'd like, I'd like to understand what is the pathway, you know, once, once you enter it, into the profession. Uh, is that it? Uh, you know, is there any sort of growth? Is there any pathway uh, or any ladder to climb? You know what 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 happens uh, with uh, with your ambitions and especially uh, with yours. I'd also like to know uh, what what your plans and ambitions are uh, in your career path. Yeah, um, just like my senior panelists have mentioned, most people when they when you be a dispatcher, they want to be a pilot, but not in my own case. My ambition involves in I want to attain a PhD in aviation. Certainly, I don't want to be a pilot, but if it's a calling, then I will have to take it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and also, I, I want to tell the world, you know, I want to tell the world, I want to make a huge difference, especially in the lives of this young uh, aviator now. A lot of people want to be a dispatcher, they want to be a cabin crew, they want to be a pilot. So, like, I want to help a lot of them, but generally, I'm not financially to help them. So I just have to offer a free lecture for them, like a class and some other things. And <laughs> also, I want to die peacefully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't we all? <laughs> <laughs> uh, interesting. I, I do respect your passion as well for the next generation. It's always great to give back, especially yeah. Uh, if you come from uh, a background where you do appreciate the struggles of others uh, who are trying to walk in your path, it's 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 yeah. great to have that, that the mindset and and to appreciate that you've been more lucky than others because there's so many uh, as you can see in the African aviation, yeah. group, there's so many people yeah. on the outside looking yeah. in and trying to get into some of these professions uh, that you know and to try to get into your position. I'd just like to go to Ife quickly. Uh, what, what is the landscape looking like in terms of uh, employment for flight dispatchers? Uh, I know we are in times of a pandemic as well, you know, but uh, would, you, would you encourage people to get into uh, this career right now? Uh, what, what are things looking like? What are the prospects? <laughs> certainly, certainly, yes. Okay, the employment field is really good, like I said earlier. Okay, so in case there is um, any kind of um, uncertainty, when trends change, the industry adjusts to the new normal. When new things come up, the Civil Aviation Authority will come up with new ideas, just like the pandemic. No one saw it coming. So, but somehow the Civil Aviation Authorities were able to come up with means to get going, 
Okay, so for example, in instructing, the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority made it mandatory for aspiring instructors to undergo, you know, trainings with the International Civil Aviation Organization, which is the IQ training instructors course. So we have the TIC1, TIC2. So these are measures that, you know, the Civil Aviation Authority have to like put in place to enforce standards in accordance with the digital age. So certainly there are adjustments or there are adaptations and the rest of it. So I will advise anyone aspiring to be a flight dispatcher to, you know, hop on the train. The employment field is really good. And I told you earlier, the good thing about the aviation industry as a whole is it springs up. We have a um, new, you know, airlines coming up every day, every day, because everyone needs to get to one place or the other, you know, flying from one place to the other. So, so far we have that, the aviation market will always, you know, strike. Thank you very much. Thanks for that, uh, John. Hey, Derek. Yeah, um, I just wanted to, well, we've been working away in the background. Unfortunately, we can't seem to connect with Elizabeth, but we do have somebody with us who I think knows knows Lawrence, actually, and um, is an aspiring, uh, an aspiring flight dispatcher, uh, Mustafa. So Mustafa, if you can unmute, then um, it's very good to have you on the program. Thanks for jumping on the uh, jumping on the panel last minute or live. That's very cool. So where are you today, Mustafa? Um, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, I'm, I'm very nice. Um, I send praises to the Almighty. I'm very nice. I'm good this morning. How are you? Where, where are you? I'm presently at Freetown, Sierra Leone. Fantastic. In Freetown, in Sierra Leone. So, Lawrence, you, you, you know Mustafa? Yes, 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 yes. Fantastic. Yes, exactly. Fantastic. <laughs> so, good morning, Lawrence. Yes, sir. How are you? It's been a while. <laughs> so, so what would be great is obviously, Mustafa, Hi, how are you? Can, uh, if you can tell us where you're up to with your training, and if you have any questions for either Lawrence or, or Ife or Derek or Dozy, um, then, you know, that would be fantastic. Yeah, it would also be great if you can tell us why he wants to be a flight uh, dispatcher. Yeah. Okay. Okay. First of all, um, I want to say congratulations to Lawrence for short um, achievement. Um, I'm so happy for you because um, he is um, my schoolmate. We attended the same school and currently the, the vice chairman for our alumni in our school. Um, when I saw this advert, I saw, okay, let me decide to be inside this because um, it's a nice, nice to be part of this. I just want to ask because you are talking about, I want to ask everyone in the panelists. Yeah, um, this topic was very interesting to me, and I, I, I like to do a course to be um, a departure in aviation. So I want to ask how to go about the process. Since Lauren said he want to um, develop more um, his fellow Sierraonians to achieve short. Okay, Oh, we can still hear you, Mustafa. You got to me? We can still hear you and see you. Yeah. I think he has asked his question. Yeah, I've asked. I've asked. Yeah. I think what, Loris may want to help us answer this question. because What practical little... steps can Mustafa take uh, okay. uh, to, yes. start, to kickstart his journey? To start to kickstart his journey. Okay, sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you so much, Mustafa, for joining us, you know. And... <laughs> It's really good to have you here. First of all, like um, mentioned from our panelists, to be a dispatcher one, and there are a set of, of um, criteria and requirements that I'm sure. There are a lot of schools in Freetown um, that are doing aviation. I think we have to check with them. There is one school at the Kotoki area, you know, at the center of Freetown and they are offering a lot of aviation job. I will advise you to go there, hopefully, and ask them about what, what and what you need to do for you to enroll to be a flight dispatcher. I'm not quite sure whether they have started doing flight dispatching because of recent, they contacted me to go and help them. I promised them faithfully that I'd go there. But um, what I will advise you now is that 
if you want to be, if you are considering a job in aviation, flight dispatch is the best job for you. That I can assure you. Because even if they come with the autopilot system or they don't, they still need a dispatcher. Not so, does he? You're right. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, because um, you still need a dispatcher. So being a dispatcher is one of the best jobs in the aviation field. But most people, they want to be pilots, cabin crew, want to go and be an um, air ticket officer. This one area is one of the best and profitable job in aviation. That's what I can tell you. You sold your market well, Lawrence. Thank you very much. Yes, and uh, I'd like to actually direct uh, 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 him and uh, others who are on here. I did see a message from, from John, and he was relaying a message from Ian, a friend of ours in the United States. He says that the FAA do offer grants. So uh, there's a link that John posted in the chat. Uh, please uh, do uh, check that out and see. You could, be, uh, you could end up like Lawrence. Yeah, and <laughs> find your way to the United States. Yeah. Uh, Chidozi, would you like? Uh... Yeah, I have a few more questions for the panelists. Uh, let me go to Ife, first of all. Ife, are you there for me? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. All right, well, I was going to ask you about funding. Um, are there for, such that are available for those that don't want to become flight instructors, either in Nigeria or internationally? Are there? Uh, available scholarships for people like that? Um, that depends. That depends on the approved training organizations. We have a couple of schools, okay, that, that pair up with um, organizations to, you know, give scholarship to individuals. We have them in the US, we have them in Nigeria, okay? We have approved training organizations that tend to accept instrumental payments too, for those that, you know, can't pay all the fees at once. They tend to pay, you know, bit by bit, okay? An example is um, a school in um, Nigeria, yeah, where I work in Vasa School of Aviation. We tend to accept instrumental payments, okay? And um, I also know about um, Sheffield um, Aeronautical School in the US too, and um, a couple of others. So when talking about the funds, when talking about payments, I think um, there is a way they tend to like um, alleviate, you know, the funds for people. All right. If you want to become a flood dispatcher in Nigeria, for instance, in your school, what's the budget? About how much do we have to budget for that, um, for the course, both for basic and advanced? Okay. For basic, for basic, it's um, around uh, 250,000 euro, which I, like I said earlier, can be paid in installmental you know, form. Then for advanced, it's 300,000 euro, okay, which can also be broken down. After which you proceed you, to get right. to take a- um, Do you accept international students from outside Nigeria? Yes, we do. We do, we accept international students from outside Nigeria. Right. We have right. a couple of them. But if I want one more question before we round up this session, um, you had Lawrence talk about his experience in the USA as, as an FFS certified agent. This way of, uh, let me ask you, does being certified by FFS confer any advantage on you in the African job market? Do you have to be um, certified by the FFA? 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 You mean FAA? Yeah. Yeah, FAA. Okay, um, please, can you go, go over the question again? I uh, didn't get do that. Do you have to be certified by the FAA to have, be, to be, um, to have any advantage in African job market as a flood dispatcher? Um, for a flight dispatcher, if you have an FAA license yep. in Nigeria, yep. first of all, you have to convert it. You convert it to, you know, that of the NCA, Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority, for you to be able to work in the Nigeria you know, sector. So it, I, um, it doesn't give more like a leverage over others, okay? But it's more like um, the popular thing people know, oh, it's from the US, it's um, the Federal Aviation Administration. So, but it's just basically um, the license 
Okay, same as the NCA license we get in Nigeria. All right, thank you very much, Ife, for those generous um, answers to the questions. Let me go back to um, Lawrence now. Lawrence, can you hear me? Yes, sir, I can hear you. Well, one, one more last question. Lawrence, from your experience, do you think there are enough um, job opportunities for um, uh, disability in Africa, especially with respect to the COVID-19 pandemic and all its attendant ills? Well, um, because of COVID-19, I will say there is a bit slow in the aviation market because the, the aviation sector suffered a lot in this pandemic. And, um, but from the look of things, I've been following up with new interest in the good of aviation. There are lots of airlines, there are lots of like airlines that are coming up, you know. And I believe there is a job opportunity because the future is bright for Africa when it comes to aviation. As of recent, I've heard of like um, 10 to 15 new airlines that are coming up, including the, the Nigeria National Airline, which I'm sure they will expect. And their roots of it out. <laughs> so I oh, believe that God. there are a lot of job opportunities for dispatchers and people who want to come to the aviation field. Because being a dispatcher, as I said earlier, even if we have autopilot in the system, you must need a dispatcher on ground to dispatch that flight. Even if you use a drone system, you must need a dispatcher. So, like, these are some of the opportunities that I believe. It's very bright for young um, aviator who wants to come to the field. Those dispatching, you know, if you be a dispatcher, you have a lot of opportunities. You will fly in the cockpit, you will share the same responsibility with the pilots. Of course, there is a reward package for you, you know. It's very much more rewarding, that's for sure. So I believe there is a prospect for aviation come this year to next year. All right, thank you very much, Lawrence, for those insightful answers. You have heard from the horse's mouth, if you know it's not a horse, if you want to become a friend, better just go ahead and become that ghost. When you do, there's so much on the plate for you, including yeah. flying on the job seat, in the cockpit, and sharing control with the pilots. Mm -hmm. On another time, I would like to hand over the controls to my co-pilot and captain, John Howell, and the SFO, um, Derek Insoko. How about you now? Do you have controls? Thank you. I have control, Dozy. Thank you very much. What I thought we'd do now is that we've had loads of questions and comments. So we've got a bit of a quick fire. Some of them are quite quick and some of them maybe will take a little bit for to pick the brains of our of our of our wonderful, uh, wonderful panel. So, yeah, it's been really insightful so far. So we have a question from Rachel who asked, can you be employed after just doing the basic flight dispatch or do you have to have the advanced qualification. So I thought it would be a good one for you, FA, to, to take. Okay. Um, thank you very much for that question, Rachel. Okay. For you to become a full, you know, flesh flight dispatcher, you need to be um, to undergo the training for basic and advanced. But sometimes we have people that when they're done with basic, maybe as a result of funds and the rest of it, they tend to like go for on the job training, but it's usually advisable for you to go through the basic and the advanced, okay, before becoming a flight dispatcher, because that is what you need to, you know, write an exam with the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority in Nigeria, after which you proceed to getting your license. Perfect. Yeah, great, great answer. So um, the next one's for you, Lawrence, uh, which is, we have a question about, can you demonstrate how you brief the captain before the flight? So this is quite cool because we've done this before with our ATC sessions, but you know, if we do a bit of role play and uh, Dozy's our captain and um, I don't know which, what Air Senegal, he's flying the, the new Airbus, who knows, but um, you know, you're the dispatcher. How much, yeah, okay, Umbrea, sorry. Um, yeah, let's find an Embraer operator. So it's an Air PC2195, okay, right, that, that'll do. And um, basically, how much communication do you have with the pilot and how, you know, what kind of things are you talking to them about? What is your general overview? I know we talked about this in a, in a, in a, in a, in a sort of uh, a basic sex, uh, sense, but it'd be great to hear it from, from you, how you actually do this. 
Um, actually, as I said earlier, we share the same responsibility with the captain to ensure the safety of the flight. So we are communicating with the captain like all through the journey. You have to communicate with him from the start. You have to ensure that all through until the flight reach safe. Some of the things that you communicate to the captain is you have to explain to the captain about the weather. If there is a weather um, change, you have to explain to the captain, that, oh, we need to enroute this flight from here to here. Like, for example, if the flight initially was assigned to destination A and there is a tons of weather and thunderstorm coming from that direction, you have to advise the captain that, captain, we have to divert the flight. Instead of it going to B, let us use our alternate aerodrome, which is C. So by the time we arrive in C, maybe the thunderstorm or the, or, or the weather, um, I mean, has been cleared for us to take off again from C and come back to B. This is some of the examples that um, I will give you now. Again, we have to check the weight and balance. We all know passengers, especially those that are going to Nigeria, we have a lot of baggages, <laughs> you know, and you have to, <laughs> you have to advise them, you have to advise the captain that, for example, now we have um, 3,655 kg. All of this cannot go on, on in the whole one. So the captain would say, okay, let's break it down. Put this amount in, in hole two, put this amount in hole three, and also we have to take a tons of fear. By that, you have to give the aircraft its actual weight and balance. Because remember, if you put all these 3,625 kg, for example, in hole two, the aircraft will have a very bad takeoff. Like, for example, now you're taking off like this, and if there are lots of load here, you will have to go like this. But if you put some here and here, when you take off, it will also give you the actual takeoff view. So these are some of the things that you brief the captain, you go with the flight plan. Remember the flight plan. When you say whole one or two, do you mean the fuel tanks? Uh, it actually is not the fuel tank. You know, we have the hole that we put the baggage and cargo, the front hole and the back hole. Right. Yes. Yeah, for the baggage. All right. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. So um, these are some of the things you need to explain to the captain. You have to go with the flight plan. Captain, this is the flight plan. It's okay. There is everything is in place. We have checked everything: security, baggage, passengers. We have um, 200 passengers that are going to Nigeria. We have. 15 passengers that are going to Accra. You have to give him a breakdown of your event, especially if you are not working in the station. Like for example, now um, I'm a dispatcher in Sierra Leone for ARPC Airline. My station is in Nigeria. I have to coordinate all the activities for the pilot here in Freetown. As soon as the aircraft lands, you have to walk through the cockpit, explain to the captain. Captain, we have 52 passengers. We have um, 10 male, 5 female. Remember, we have different weights for these passengers, like the male, the female, and the child. So you have to go and read the cab that we have this set of people. This is the weight. This is the baggage weight. So basically, that's just what we are doing. <laughs> now that's yeah. I have a very good question for you, Lawrence. I guess this is where you advise a captain and he doesn't take your advice and does what he wants to do. Have you encountered stubborn pilots before? Stubborn oh, pilots yes. <laughs> yeah, and sure. How, 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 do you them? how do you handle them? Because you have to know that pilots are people sometimes they have hot tempers, you know? I don't know about pilot Derek, <laughs> but <laughs> pilots sometimes they have hot tempers. So um, you need to know how to approach them, first of all. And Who come and collect it. Hot tempered. Remember, whenever you upset a pilot, they have to say, Oh, we need a rest for eight hours. And you don't want that flight to be on the ground for eight or eight plus hours because all the blame will come up to you. So, even if the pilot is very hungry, you need to give him some time. 
or better still, you talk to the co-pilots. But for me, I have had a lot of um, a lot of friendly pilots like uh, Amatola husband, you know. Okay. Yes. yes okay. Exactly. He fly for Airpc Airline. He's one of the best pilots, you know. I work with a lot of others. They are very friendly. As soon as you walk through the cockpit, in fact, they will they will greet you, and they will sometimes ask the cabin crew to give you some drink or wine after you have done all the job for them. <laughs> another, another reason to become a, a flight instructor is that you get one from the captain. Yeah, yeah. it's great. I mean, I think another that. Another reason to become a flight I'm sorry. I, I can't hear you. I'm saying another reason to become a flight instructor is that you drink some wine from the captain. <laughs> well, um, maybe the captain will ask the cabin crew to give you one. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's not sometimes always, but maybe after a successful operation, we say, ah, what you did in the load sheet is very good. You can go and have some wine or you can go and have some things, you know. Very nice, that but only, only after work, Lawrence. No wine yes, during, yes, during, yes, during yes, work. Yes. <laughs> but I think, the thing that's, I think the thing that's really important is that, um, you know, when it comes to, we've done sessions on management and ATC and cabin crew, mm -hmm. Everybody plays their part, but dispatch is so important because if you're not, yes. if you don't dispatch that aircraft on time, it costs the yes. airline money. So money. actually, commercially, it's a huge, huge um, responsibility to make sure that it is on time. Everything is where it should be. The, the captain yeah. is happy. The communication, as if yeah. they said, is is really good. Um, yeah. Just two two things. I've got an, I've got a question for you, FA, from from one of our um, our, our uh, 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 attendees today. But um, one thing, I just did a quick search while we were on, on YouTube. So if you type in flight dispatch on YouTube, there are so many videos about a day in the life of the flight dispatcher all around the world. So if you're interested in this career, yes, this is, you know, this is a great way to get that information. But if you want to know a bit more, you want to see it in action, just go and spend a bit of time on, on those platforms because that is there and it, and it will give you that flavor for what it all entails. So that's one thing. Um, quick one, I think, for UFA was um, uh, from Tunde uh, in Nigeria, who says, just finished high school, would like to be a pilot. But obviously, because of the cost, I, I, I'm thinking about being a flight dispatcher. Do I need a university degree to, um, to, to get started? Hello, Tunde. You do not need a degree to become uh, a flight dispatcher. I already said it earlier. Okay, you do not even need a proud you know, knowledge about aviation or any background knowledge as regards flight operations. All you need to do is be 21 years and above, okay, before you can enroll to be a flight dispatcher. You need a minimum of five credits, including um, English and mathematics, okay? Then you should have the passion, you should have great um, listening skills, great communicative skills. You should be fluent in English language you should be um, able to communicate effectively. I think that's all you need to you know, have to become a flight dispatcher. So you just enroll in an ATO that's an approved training organization, okay? And they'll run you through the basic class down to the advanced class, after which you go for your on-the-job training and you get your license. Away you go, great. And um, then there's a follow-up question from Tunde about how many hours a week do you work and how much what's the sort of basic salary um you know without maybe a range on the salary side we're not asking what's your salary but you know what can they expect in it would be interesting to know that from Sierra Leone perspective and, and also Nigeria but in terms of how many hours and how many days a week that you work um if both of you can take that but yeah if we start with you Lawrence maybe that'd be great um actually the time period for a dispatcher should be eight hours I think that's the minimum time. And I don't know much about <laughs> the packages in some other countries, but what I would say that it has a very good take home if you choose to be a flight dispatcher. I'm sure piloting and more than us, but, <laughs> but also it's good. You know, that's good. good. Yeah. And is that the same for you, if I in, in Nigeria? It's that kind yeah, of almost, yeah, almost the same. Okay, so as a flight dispatcher, you work for eight to 10 hours in every consecutive yeah. 24 hours. 
and they usually take turns, okay? One flight dispatcher relieves the other flight dispatcher of duty. It's usually arranged in shifts based on the kind of company you're working with or the kind of airline you're working with. And, okay, and that's very much salary driven. aspect. Oh yeah, yeah. Go on. <laughs> it's um, it's a it's a good one actually. It's a good one. So I would just advise you to delve into it first before. Yeah, yeah. I'm 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 just curious about that as well. Uh, in terms, uh, uh, yeah, like uh, because obviously I'll 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 speak about the pilot side. Like uh, if a pilot is flying a smaller aircraft or a larger aircraft, they're definitely and different and. Uh, Perhaps depending also on the airline, obviously, if you're flying Emirates, it's different from flying a, a, a smaller carrier. So uh, are, those, uh, are there some dynamics uh, in that sense as well that you can explain? Okay. Um, Derek, was that for me? Uh, okay, yeah, I actually didn't. Okay. I didn't. <laughs> so um, open. like I said, it depends on the company, it depends on the airline you're working with. And also it depends on the position, okay? So you can't go into the flight dispatch, you know, industry, for instance, as a starter and expecting to be earning the same amount um, a senior flight um, dispatcher is getting or what an OCC manager, an operations control center manager is getting. So it all depends on the sector, the area, the um, airline, okay? The location too, the location too matters. So all this put together is going to get you to where wherever you want to get to. Yeah, thanks a lot, John. Do you want to uh, uh, introduce our, yeah, our aspiring abso pilot? Thing? Absolutely. Yeah. Let's see whether we can get Elizabeth Elizabeth on. The other cool thing um, for UFA is uh, Rachel, who asked the question earlier, is going to be in your class. I think in February. She's on the February intake at your school. So. That's very cool. So that's very exciting, Rachel. You know, welcome to the world of aviation. And I'm sure you've you've picked a great course and obviously a great teacher as well. Um, so, yeah, we're going to see whether we can get Elizabeth. Um, we've had some some challenges. Can you hear us, Elizabeth? Can you see us? Oh, we can't hear you. We can see you, but we can't hear you. We can't. Can you hear her, Derek? I can't hear her. No, I can hear her. Oh, I'm so sorry. We're not going to be able to speak to you. You can wave to us. We can. You can obviously hear us, but we can't. We can't hear you. There's a problem with yeah. the audio. Yeah, I'm afraid. So, so we'll we'll do the we'll do the quiz in in sort of five minutes or so. Um, there was a question. I know we kind of touched on this, but we had a good question about what's the downsides of being a flight dispatcher. What are the challenges? What are the what are the what are the bits that you don't like? We've already talked about some of the interactions with the with the captains, although that's uh, that's rare. But anything else from your side, Lawrence, with the with regards uh, the challenges? Um, yes, you know, like the challenges for a dispatcher first of all is the finance. You know, like um, that tends to block young aspiring aviator who wants to come to the dispatching field, like. They think that, oh, it's expensive. You know, it's very expensive to the world. So the finance is one big problem. I uh, have tons of messages of people telling me, oh, please, is there any scholarship to do flight dispatching? It's expensive. I cannot raise the money because of this and this. So I believe that the finance is one great problem for people to come to the dispatching field. But um, I would advise them to start savings. You know, if you start savings now, like if you want to enroll next year and then you start to save for it now, I think you will get there. But one of the biggest challenge is the finance. Okay, yeah, that's like uh, pretty much, uh, 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 that's an aviation story that uh, all the different careers uh, tend to share. Yeah, but I'd like to think that uh, the, the barriers to entry are a bit lower for uh, for the flight dispatch versus, versus the likes of, of flight training, which is, uh, in my, my opinion, ridiculous. Uh, something else I actually wanted to ask uh, a bit earlier because we spoke about technology and, and all these new technologies, and uh, you spoke about drones 
but uh, how how do you feel about uh, uh, technology, uh, Ife, uh, with regards to your profession uh, right now? Uh, uh, the, the new technologies that are coming in uh, are going to usher in a, a new era of single pilot operations. Remember back in the day we had we had up to four pilots yeah, operating some of the aircrafts and, and, and it's going down to, to one pilot and perhaps it might, it might go down even to zero. Uh, uh, is this technology shift uh, uh, set to affect uh, the dispatch side of things as well? Uh, some of the technologies that you're using uh, do they mean that less dispatchers are needed today uh, and perhaps even much less uh, tomorrow as, as we evolve? Okay, thank you very much. So I don't think um, there is going to be reduction in manpower as regards flight dispatch. Okay, so the fact that um, technology has been introduced, things tend to change, with the trends change, okay, the industry adjusts to the new normal. So one thing I would advise flight dispatchers is um, to be more open-minded, to be open to um, corrections, open to new ideas, open to anything new. Okay, so this is going to like set you, set you above your contemporaries. So yes, technology is here to stay and you have to just go with the trend for me. Certainly, we have to embrace it. And uh, uh, Lawrence, you you spoke about uh, quite a number of challenges. Obviously, finance is chief among them. And uh, what do you think, though, uh, in terms of addressing these uh, these challenges? Though, what uh, what is your opinion, and what uh, do you have any ideas of how you think we can uh, we, we we can address some of these challenges? Do you mean uh, us uh, or uh, uh, no, not necessarily you, but uh, <laughs> who, who? In fact, you could start with who is charged uh, uh, with addressing uh, with addressing the challenges. Uh, whose responsibility is it? Is it the industry? Is it the government? So is it whoever? And you know what can they do uh, to address some of the the issues that you're talking about? Yeah. Um, you never know. We could have someone with power and authority listening yeah, to us. Yeah. yeah. I believe um, what what I believe here is that for us to address this issue, the, the airline has a great role to play in connection with the government. Why the airline? Because they have to do the operational part of it, and the government has to do like the finance part of it. So both of them has to adjust, and they have to create a lot of scholarship if possible, if not like 100 percent but like 50 or 30, 60 percent for people to go and study, you know, I think that's one help. But lots of people now who has the ambition, who has the like who has the willingness to go and do it are afraid because of the finance, you know, like for piloting now it's quite expensive. I've been following up those posts on social media, you know, you used to crack form that if you have $200,000, will you go for a piloting or will you take the money, <laughs> you know? Like a lot of people say, ah, I will take yeah. the money, even though they have the ambition, you know, it's expensive. Yeah. So the government and the airline industry has to really come on board and see how best they can help, you know, how best they can help in this. That's what I think. <laughs> okay, I also like to add to what you said. Okay, yeah. just like um, you said, um, we need to try and introduce more scholarships, yes. you know, engage students, introduce scholarships. So we should have more of approved training organizations organizing scholarships, pairing of organizations. So an example of an ATO in Nigeria is Universal School of Aviation. They give scholarship with uh, the African Aviation Group. So if you have interest in becoming a flight dispatcher, you can just you right. know, send the message and the rest of it. Okay, thank a you fact. for that one. Yeah, John, before you uh, get into That's the quiz, do you mind sharing that uh, link to the Facebook as well? Yeah, uh, to um, the FAA. Yeah. Because, oh yeah. Uh, for, the, for those who will be watching later on. Oh, on, on Facebook. Facebook. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. No problem. Yeah. Um, yes, I will do that. It's a bit difficult to do it right this second but i will put it on the on the facebook link as well um and thanks yeah thanks for um 
uh, to 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 Ian for sending that across as well. It's really really good to uh, to receive that. So I think we're pretty much ready for the quiz. I think there are some people in already, which is great. Um, I I just want to say, you know, you guys, uh, it was an amazing to hear from Lawrence to talk about. Look, I went to America, but my intention all along was to come back, inspire the next generation, serve, and and we need we need people like that when this industry recovers which it will, it's going to really go fast and we're going to need good people, qualified people and uh, young people. And, you know, as much as it's been discouraging the last couple of years, it's been hard, it's going to come back and, and it feels like we're at the, on the cusp of that happening. So, you know, really exciting, uh, exciting times for, from you guys.